Hallelujah. 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 There is power in the name of Jesus. Man, I'm telling you, demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Sickness and diseases flee and bow to the name of Jesus. There is no name in the earth that is higher and more powerful than the name of Jesus. That's why the Bible says that every knee is going to bow. Philippians 2 and 9. Every, every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess that Jesus is Lord. Now we can bow now by choice or we can bow later by force. But every knee is going to bow when he cracked the sky. Every knee is going to bow to our king. Hallelujah. To the Lord of lords and the king of kings. The Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Hallelujah. He is the one that made us and not we ourselves. Well, listen, it's so good to see you in the house of God. I do see things a little different from up here. Praise God. Thank, thank you, honey. Praise the Lord. Hey, man. So good to see you this morning. Um, just excited about what the Lord is doing and all that God has done. I mean, nine years in ministry, nine years in ministry. We celebrated on yesterday, and, you know, we're, we're grateful. We couldn't do it by ourselves. You know, we are the pastors and founders, but we thank you that God didn't call us to kingdom life alone. Amen. But each of you have a place. Amen. Those whom he have called to this church have a place at kingdom life and an assignment that's already here waiting on you. Amen. Amen. So we, we pay homage to you. We honor you as well. We thank you. Thank you for every seed that's been sown into our lives, my wife and I. And uh, thank you for your faithfulness, for your commitment. You know, you love God. Amen. And because you love God, you give. Amen. We don't give because we're under the law. We don't give because somebody's forcing us. No, we give because we love God. We serve because we love God. Amen. We forgive because we love God. Everything we do is, is, is because of the love of God. The Bible says that shed abroad in our hearts by Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. Listen, if you have your Bibles, let's do our Bible declaration this morning. We like to decree and declare the word of God. We love to confess the word of God. There's so much power in the name of Jesus. So if you have your Bible, just lift them in the air. Say, this is my Bible. It is the living word of God. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. This morning I'll be taught the indestructible, incorruptible, ever-living seed of the word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive to receive God's word. My life will never be the same again. No, never, ever, ever. Because of the word of God. It's quick, powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword. Because the Lord is on my side. I prosper in everything that I do. I believe it. I've said it. That settles it. In Jesus' name. Come on, get the Lord a shout of praise before you have a seat. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While you're sitting down, go ahead and look around. Look at your neighbors. Look to your left and look to your right. Amen. Go ahead and greet somebody. You know what I'm saying? A holy, a holy wave. A holy wave. Amen. Hallelujah. Good to see you. Good to see y'all. Good to see you. Good to see your smiling faces. All of y'all looking handsome and beautiful. So good to see you in the house of God on this morning. Amen. So good to see you. Uh, we thank God for each of you for being here. Well, you know, I'm Pastor AJ on uh, behalf of my family and entire Kingdom Life Church family. Uh, we thank you for being here at Kingdom Life Church where we are advancing God's kingdom one life at a time, reaching people who are far from God, bringing them closer step by step. We thank God also for uh, just the testimonials on yesterday from Tawan and uh, Sinbad, amen. Um, I'm sorry, I say, <laughs> you know, I've been wanting to say Sinbad, oh, oh, I, I've been wanting to say, I know, I've been wanting to say Sinbad all day and then all of a sudden, I, I knew it wasn't right when I was thinking it. <laughs> for real, Sinclair, Bab, Bab, we got you Sinclair. Lord Jesus, not y'all, not Sinbad. Y'all remember Sinbad, right? Do y'all remember Sinbad? Okay, we don't see him no more, but that's not Sinbad. That's Sinclair. 
Sinclair, look, Sinclair Bab. I was trying to shorten everything, just bring it all together. Just don't worry about the first and last name, just Sinbad. Like Tawan. <laughs> no, okay, all right, we, we good. Everybody good? Woo, all right, okay. Whew. All right, praise God. So, so uh, this is the year of promise, y'all. This is the year of promise. We declare 2020 to be the year of promise, and this has been a year, glory to God. So, look, I'm going to dive right on in. Um, have you enjoyed uh, Invisible Enemy Parts 1, 2, and 3? Hey, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been good to me as well, and, uh, and, uh, and us understanding that, you know, that we are dealing with an invisible enemy, an invisible adversary. And so my objective uh, during this series was, was hopefully, and I hope that I've done that and, uh, as I close out today, is to, to help to expose uh, this unseen enemy, this unseen adversary, uh, pull the covers off from, pull the blankets off from, so you, we can see this adversary for who he really is, and then give you some tools, amen, that you will be able to use so that you can have the victory over this unseen adversary. But first, we have to recognize and identify who the adversary is or who the enemy is before we can eliminate him. Amen? How many know you can't eliminate an enemy you don't know about? Or that you have not identified? Amen? So we've identified who our invisible enemy is, who our invisible adversary is. We have identified him. Now we can eliminate him. Amen? How do we eliminate him? Through the word of God. Right? Is that correct? I hear some people over here, but what, what y'all think on this side? Good. Come on, talk back to me now. Come on now. I mean, I, I know I couldn't hear you when we was online, but we're not online now. You can use your outside voices in here. <laughs> Amen? Amen? All right. So just because something is not visible to the naked eye doesn't negate its effectiveness. An invisible enemy is very treacherous. This enemy, this adversary is very treacherous. He's very cunning. He's very crafty. Amen. He is very precise. You know, he is a master uh, strategist. He's a master of deception. And so he watches and he plots and he plans. And listen, he is patient. He is patient. He will wait long enough when you, until you think that, it, that it's over and that, that everything is settled down. You understand? And, and you let your guard down and you stop reading and you stop praying and you stop pulling back from the things of God. You think that you're good, amen, then out of the blue, you understand, this adversary, this unseen adversary will come with some, one, with some type of an attack that you may not be prepared for. And I'm saying prepared spiritually, mentally, amen, and so that's why it's important for us, and I'm going to share some things at the close of this to encourage you about far as some next steps. And so, again, this invisible enemy is treacherous. He, he's cunning. He's subtle. Amen. You know, and Dad said on yesterday, there are spirits behind all of these names. There are spirits behind these names. He talked about them on yesterday. He talked about there are spirits behind the name of racism and the name of division and the name of prejudice and the name of discrimination and all of these names, pride. And, you know, there are spirits connected to these names, but we sung about a greater name. We sung about a name that's more powerful than any other name. So until, in, until um, we call the name of Jesus, then we already know that, 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 that nothing's going to change. You know, Elder Sadeo quoted me on yesterday, but I'm, I'm going to say what, this is what I, what I say. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the testimony, when you come to Jesus, the, the, the testimony of a, a, a changed life is what's more powerful than anything else. Because, see, people cannot deny your changed life. That nobody can take away your experience with Jesus. Nobody can take away, you know, when, when you met the Lord, when you came into contact with the Lord. Nobody could take that away from Paul, that Damascus Road experience. And he shared it over time. and over, He shared it over and over again because nobody could take that from him. He knew that he encountered the Lord that day. And you must know the day that you encountered the Lord because the day you encountered the Lord Amen. Things may not happen drastically, but there should be some changes happening in your life. He doesn't just come in our life to leave us the same way. He comes in our life to help us live a better life. Because if I was hateful before the Lord and now I'm hateful with the Lord, 
Do you got the Lord? Now, I'm not talking about a one-shot deal. I'm not talking about each one of us. All of us have a day or all of us have a time, sometime when we may, you know, get off course or say something crazy. Amen. But that's not the norm. Right? Okay. Because we're not, we're not parking there. This is not who I am. You understand? You know who I am, but then, you know, I just had a bad day today. You know, forgive me. It's all good. We keep it moving. But, you know, just to... If that's who I am, is, is that's what I'm uh, displaying all the time, then perhaps I need to make some changes. Amen. Make sure I'm connected to who I say I'm connected to. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, let's go to my, uh, my scripture here. I, I got a few minutes, and I need to make sure that we can use all of them. All right, okay. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 10, amen. We're going to start reading in verse 3. This is the foundation scripture that we've been using throughout this series. 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 through 6. 3 through 6. It says, for though we walk or we live in the flesh, we are not carrying on our warfare according to the flesh and using mere human weapons. You see how the Bible talks about the weapons of this, war, this world? Mere human weapons, meaning weapons that are just, you know, we just talk like they're just puny. They're, they're little. They're they're minute. They're, they're, they're ineffective. We're not, we're not using mere human weapons. Verse 4 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood, but they are mighty before God for the overthrow and destruction of strongholds. Apostle Ray said it on yesterday, yesterday where, 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 we, where we, tear, we should be tearing down strongholds and not tearing down statues. Tearing down statues, not changing anything, but you tear down a stronghold, oh boy. And, and, though, and though people may have in their heart things that, that are contrary to the word of God, if you don't get to the heart, if you, don't, if you don't change that heart, if you don't take out that stony heart and allow God to put in a heart of flesh, amen, nothing is going to change. You can tear down all the statues in the world, and if you feel better after that, I'm telling you, it's going to be short-lived. Because that's not going to be enough. You understand? It's never going to be enough until the heart is changed. Because then you're going to tear down the other stuff. It's, going to, um, it's never going to be enough, saints. So we don't tear down statues. We tear down strongholds. We tear down strongholds according to the Bible. We're going to live according to the Bible. We tear down strongholds, the Bible says. And we overthrow them. Glory to God. These are the weapons that God has issued us to demolish strongholds. This invisible enemy will try to, he will try to set up these strongholds in your mind. And that's why people think the way they think is because of their mind. Remember when you weren't saved and the way you thought about certain things when you weren't saved? And now that you're saved and you're in the kingdom, you think different about people, places, and things? Amen. So this is what happens, amen, when you come into the kingdom of God. But the invisible enemy will try to keep those strongholds set up in your mind to say, oh, no, we're not giving this to God. I have a right to feel this way. I have a right to do this. No, you don't. No, you don't. You've been bought with a price. You've been purchased by the blood of Jesus. You don't have any rights. Ooh, in silence. It's silent in here. No, we don't have rights. We're in the kingdom now. We're followers of a teacher. He's our master. His name is Jesus. He's our Lord and our Savior. His name is Jesus. And we follow him according to the scripture. Amen? Mm -hmm. Okay. Amen. The devil has no legal right to attack you, but he is so deceptive. He's so deceptive. He's so cunning. Amen. That's why 2 Corinthians tells us not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. This dude got so many devices. So we can't be ignorant of them. That's why Hosea 4 and 6, well, that was 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. But Hosea 4 and 6 also tells us, amen, that, you know what I'm saying, that my people perish for a lack of knowledge. People are perishing out here in the earth because of what they don't know. Knowledge. It's what they don't know. Knowledge. It's what they don't know. And so they're perishing when they should be flourishing. Wow. 
Mm, 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 this is good to me already. I'm just getting going. Number five, number five. Come on, come on. We got to keep going, though. Number five, it says, inasmuch as we refute arguments and theories and reasonings in every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. I love when Apostle kept saying it on yesterday. I'm talking to believers, right? I'm talking to believers, right? Because somewhere in our mind as pastors and as people, we think that when people come into the things of God, that they automatically take the word of God and say, now this word of God is my word. I'm going to eat this word. It belongs to me. I'm going to live by what the word of God says. And a lot of people just haven't taken time to read the Bible. And so they're still stuck in their own mindsets, and they're still stuck in the way they think and have been thinking for so long, and because they haven't renewed the mind, then they're still thinking the same way, and then you come along and say something that sounds like, what is he talking about? I'm talking about the word. But because you don't know it, and you hadn't read it, and so it's not a confirmation, you know, it's like... But those that know the word are like, praise God, boom, it hit hit them. You know why? It's confirmation. That's what the word of God does. When you read it during the week in your prayer closet and in your time of prayer, when you come on here Sunday morning, all God doing is confirm stuff. Boom, 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 boom. Why? Because you already gave them something to work with during the week. But if if you're not doing anything, then you come in here and it's like, what is he talking about? Listen to this, y'all. Inasmuch as we refute arguments and theories, look at all, and reasonings and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. Proverbs 1 and 7 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. This would take all my time, though, because, you know, it's all this other stuff I'd be saying. The fear of the Lord, it is. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And we wonder why, even though we have some knowledge, if we don't fear the Lord, we don't have the knowledge that we need to walk and compete in the earth today. Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So what I think I know, I don't really know until I come into the fear of the Lord. Once I come into the fear of the Lord, now God downloads the knowledge of God on the inside of me, and now I can be more productive, and he opens my eyes to certain things that I could not see before I feared them. Not afraid of them, but before I feared them. I reverenced them. I put his word above my words and my life. The true knowledge of God, and we lead every thought we lead every thought captive. Come here, young lady, real quick, real quick. Come on, run up here. Hurry up. Come on, come on, come on. This is my goddaughter. Give me a hand, please. Oh. All right. So it's like this. We lead every thought away. A thought come in my life that's, that's not uh, uh, with God, I do like this. You arrest the thought and you lead it away captive. Get on out of here. Get your little, get your little thought out of here that's against God. You ain't coming in my head. You ain't coming in my mind. Get on out of here. Let's get Chloe a hand clap of praise for that. My beautiful goddaughter. Amen. All right. (laughs) So we lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. And then it says, being in readiness to punish every insubordinate for his disobedience when your own submission and obedience as a church are fully secured and complete. Saints, we're fighting against something that the eye cannot see. Saints, we're fighting against what the eye cannot see. That's what we're fighting against. Let's go to Daniel, Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7, thought I read this on last week as well. Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, I think I left off right here. It says, and he shall speak great words against the Most High. Who do you think you're talking about? Exactly, whoever said it over here, Satan. Amen. He shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High God. He's going to wear, he's trying to wear out the saints of the Most God. Listen, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of times. Daniel is a prophetic book, is an end time book. 
Daniel, the book of Daniel, coupled with Revelation and Ezekiel and some other books, these books are full of end time prophecy and things that's unfolding and happening uh, even, as, even as we're speaking. Amen. But he's going to, it says, but he's, he shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and a dividing of time. The adversary's goal is to wear out the saints. If he can wear you out, he can wear you down. Galatians 6 and 9, you know what I'm saying, says don't grow weary in, wearing, in, in well-doing. You know, it's always, I'm always uh, just wondering about when it says don't grow weary while you're doing good. You're doing good. How, why would I grow weary if I'm doing good? You would think that I will grow weary when I'm doing wrong. But the Bible says don't grow weary while you're doing good, Galatians 6 and 9, because it says grow weary, meaning it's progressive. It's not going to happen overnight. You can actually grow into weary. Even while you're doing good things, even while you're serving, even while you're giving, even, amen, while you're loving on people and all that, you can grow weary. And the Bible says, don't grow weary. Just know when you grow weary, it's the adversary trying to wear you down. He's trying to wear you down so he can wear you out. That's his job. That's his assignment. Come on, Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10, uh, verses 1 through 3 first. Uh, it says, in the year of Cyprus, uh, or Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel, whose name was called Belshazzar. The message was true, but the appointed time was long. And he understood the message and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three Full weeks. Verse 3 says, I ate no pleasant food, nor meat, nor meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all till whole till three whole weeks were fulfilled. This is where we get the Daniel fast. A lot of people do the 21-day Daniel fast. It was, it was right here when Daniel was going through a tough time, trusting God and believing God and Listening for a word from God. He needed a word from God. He needed to hear from God. He was mourning. Glory to God. He needed to hear from God, saints. And we are living in a time where we need to hear from God as well. We need to hear from the Lord. We need to hear from God. Come on, let's go down to uh, chapter, I mean, verse 8 real quick. Let's move down to verse 8. Verse 8 says this. It says, so I was left there all alone to see this amazing vision. My strength, before that it said, because some people was there. If you want to read it all the way through, some other people there with him. But they didn't know what was going on. So then it says, he was left there all alone to see this amazing vision. My strength left me. My face grew deathly pale. And I felt very weak. Then I heard the man speak. And when I heard the sound of his voice, I fainted and lay there with my face to the ground. He went into a deep sleep. Verse 10 says, just then a hand touched me and lifted me, still trembling to my hands and my knees. He was still trembling when this man touched him. Verse 11 says, and the man said to me, Daniel, you are very precious to God. Oh, my goodness. Wouldn't you love to hear, oh, my, what in the world? Man, you're, you're so precious to God. Let me tell you, you know, I'm the man that's going to tell you today, you're so precious to God. Each of you, you're so precious to God. Every last one of you are so precious to God. You're precious to God. He said, Daniel, you are very precious. I'm sorry, you're very precious to God. Not just precious, you're very precious to God. And you need to know that and say about yourself. When you look at yourself, you say, I am very precious to God. Don't ever let the adversary tell you something different than what the Bible is saying about you. I am very precious to God. Devil, you a liar. <laughs> Amen. You are very precious to God, so listen carefully to what I have to say to you. Stand up, for I have been sent to you, a messenger angel. Oh, we got the messenger angel. Praise God. Is Emmanuel here? Oh. The messenger angels. These are messenger angels that have been sent to you. When he said this to me, I stood up. Still trembling. He was trembling because of the presence of this, this being, this being. <laughs> he was trembling. Then he said, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, Daniel. 
So whenever the presence of God shows up in that way or the presence of a being shows up, you know, we have a tendency sometimes to be afraid. It, it is fearful sometimes. You experience God or experience his presence, amen, and uh, it, it, sometimes it, it can be a little frightening, amen. But, but just know, don't be afraid because God is never, never, he's never going to hurt us, amen. So, so he said this to me, stand up. He was trembling. And he said to me, don't be afraid, Daniel, since the first day when you begin to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your request has been heard in heaven. He didn't get an answer. And I'm not going to read the whole thing. He, he didn't get an answer for 21 days later. But from the first day, this messenger angel is saying, listen to me. From the first day you begin to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your request has been heard in heaven. He humbled himself under the mighty hand so that, listen, if we humble ourselves in due time, he'll lift us up as well. Daniel, because you sought to understand and you can with humility, this is what he said, your request has been heard in heaven. I have come in, in answer to your prayer. Verse 13, but for 21 days, listen to this, the spirit prince, an unseen enemy, an invisible adversary of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. These are all unseen, invisible beings. This is not, Daniel is talking to an, to an angel of the Lord. And this angel is telling him that he was blocked by another invisible adversary. Something else was unseen that was trying to stop him from bringing the answered prayer, the answer to his prayer to Daniel. You ever needed some wisdom on something and, and you know, you prayed about it, you wonder what's taking so long, why is this not happening? There's, 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 some, there's an unseen adversary. Listen, this is the first heaven that we're in right here. We're on the first, we're in the first heaven. The second heaven is right above this atmosphere. Right above the atmosphere is the second heaven. The second heaven is where all the demonic activity resides. The third heaven is where God and the angels are. And they, have, they come through the second heaven to get to us. And so this angel came through the second heaven, but he was hindered. He was blocked. Let's see what happened, though. Oh, let's keep reading. That's not the end. He was blocked, you know what I'm saying? An invisible enemy was blocking him. The messenger angel was sent to bring word to Daniel, and he was being blocked by an invisible enemy. All right. Then Michael, uh-oh, okay. Then Michael, one of the archangels, Michael, an uh, archangel is a high-ranking angel, an angel that have ranking over territories and, and over over, I'm telling you, over a lot of territories and over a lot of angels. So Michael, who was a high-ranking angel, he's a warring angel as well, he defends the will of God in the earth, amen, uh, for the people of God. He defends the will of God in the earth for the people of God. So when you're praying, when you're believing God, and God wants to get an answer to you, get a breakthrough to you, Michael, the archangels, and his staff, those that work alongside him, amen, are assigned to help get the answer, the breakthrough, the promise, the deliverance, the healing, the whatever it is, to you. And they're on assignment to cause the will of God to happen in your life through your prayers. Are you getting this? Wow. So, 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 so this is what he said. So then Michael, one of the archangels, came to help me. So this is the uh, other angel talking, the messenger angel. And then he said, and I left him there. Look, I don't fight like that. <laughs> he telling Dan, look, you know what I'm saying, I don't, you know, I don't know him to fight those kind of guys. So, you know what I'm saying, I left him there, and I'm coming on here to talk to you. I'm going, I'm, now I'm going to carry on the business that I was supposed to be taking care of initially before I was blocked. So I left him there. I left them there. They can fight, battle, whatever. I'm on assignment to get a message to you from the Lord. Man, this is, boy, I'm telling you, boy, this is really good to me. Man, this is good to me. Yeah. So, so he left them there with the what? Spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. Now, I'm here to explain what will happen to your people in the future, for this vision concerns a time yet to come. Everything that he was sharing in Daniel, in the book of Daniel, the visions, the revelations, it was for an appointed time. It's, it's 
perhaps a time that we're living in right now. A time that we're living in right now. Behind all of the evil in the world are forces that we can't see that are trying to control outcomes. You know, dad dropped the mic when he, when he finished yesterday, dropped the mic and said, uh, you are responsible for your response. I can never blame somebody else for my reaction. Never. Take the power away from they made me do it. They made me say it. They made, no, 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 no. You chose to do it. You chose to say it. You did it because you wanted to. Because I'm responsible for how I respond. But there are unseen enemies and forces that are behind the scenes that are trying to control outcomes. And we as the people of God have to stay connected to the word of God so we can make sure that we are responding according to the word of God. That we are responding according to what the Bible is saying. Amen? Are y'all okay? Get the Lord a hand clap praise then. Thank you. All right, all right, all right, all right. Come on, come on, come on. We're going, we going higher. We're just going, we're just going to go and finish it out today. Amen. So Elijah, we're going to talk about Elijah just briefly. Elisha, Elisha. Elisha, I'm just going to get a little excerpt before we read 2 Kings chapter 6. But that's where I'm going. 2 Kings chapter 6. But Elisha, he was warning the king of Israel on multiple occasions about the plans of the king of Syria. So they was in a war, and so Elisha, who was the prophet in that day, was, war- was warning the king of Israel about the plans of this other king and what he was doing and, and all that. So the king, the king said, somebody snitching. Somebody in the camp snitching on us. Somebody in the camp is snitching. Somebody in the camp is telling Israel about our plans. Every time we make a move, it seems like the, the children of Israel, the war and the, 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 the armies of Israel already know. They already, they're like, they're one up on our plans. He says somebody in the camp is snitching. Somebody snitching. And look, one of the servants said, no, my Lord. No, nobody's telling on you. No, 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 no. Because we know what you'll do to us. <laughs> no, we're not. We're not. We're not doing that. No, my Lord. But there is a prophet in, the, in Israel who, who is telling the, the armies of Israel what you, what's happening in your bedchamber. There's a prophet who, who, is, who, is, who God is revealing to him the things that are happening in your private chambers. I need you to see how powerful the God is that we serve, that we serve. Man, that was, oh, yes, yes. Let's read it, y'all. 2 Kings chapter 6. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. 2 Kings chapter 6, you there? You there? It's on the screen too, right? Verse 13, y'all ready? All right. And he said, this King James Version, and he said, so, 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 He's saying, we're going after this dude now, since now that's the word on the street. He says, go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told, saying, behold, he is in Dotham. We, we, word on the street, he in Dotham. We know exactly where he is. We got word. Amen. They ain't had no cell phones. They ain't had no, I mean, great day. How did I, I, how they knew he was in Dotham? I mean, great day. Word traveled like that back then. Man, we can't holler know what's going on. No, it's okay, okay. All right, look, no, he said, go and spy where he is that I may send and fetch him. And it was told, saying, behold, he is in Dothan. Verse 14 says, therefore, send he he thither horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and could pass the city about. They surrounded the city. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and hosts come past the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? He's like, look, this was the servant of uh, Elisha, the prophet. What are we going to do? Master, master, what are we going to do, man? Look, I need you to see what's going on outside. Verse 16, he said, (laughs) and he answered, fear not. And that's just like, that's the only two words they knew in the Bible back then, right? When something's happening, like, fear not, don't fear, don't be afraid. And then we say today, y'all be like, I need some more. What? Tell me something else. I'm like, don't be afraid. He's like, that's it? Yeah. <laughs> you don't got enough, Pastor? Uh-uh. Don't be afraid. Fear not. 
What? He said, that's it. That's all you got? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> he said, don't. He said, fear not. Fear not. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Ooh. Oh, the tables turn, saints. This invisible enemy is no match, amen, for the people of God, amen, or those that are standing in the will of God. It's no match. He said, those that are, they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Verse 17 says, and Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. Mm. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the whole mountain, let me, I say whole, but it's the mountain, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Whew. To fight an invisible enemy, you need an invisible army. Ooh, Jesus. We cannot fight an invisible enemy without the invisible army. <laughs> Look, we have an invisible arsenal of weapons and we have an invisible army that's at our, our disposal. An invisible army. He allowed him to see in the spirit. Verse 18 says this, and when they had came down, and when they had came down, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, smite these people, I pray thee, with blindness. Boy, these men were powerful. God used these men mightily. Make them all blind, Lord. What? And God, God just listened to you? Let the sun stand still. God just hold up time for you? Whew. Help us, Jesus. So much more we can do. So much more demonstration. We, boy, boy, boy. People run to these other psychics and all these other wizards and soothsayers and all these other types of uh, um, demonic uh, forces. They're demonic horoscopes and all that kind. Of, you may like them. Sorry, there's horror scopes. You know, it's all that stuff. Mediums and stuff is demonic in nature. There's a spirit behind it. But people run to those things because they think they're getting better results than going to the word. So they feel like they will give me a word quicker than the Bible will give me a word. And so instead of me getting in the Bible, it's easier for me to just go to you, pay you a couple hundred dollars, break you off a little sum, and say, you know, tell me what my future is. Tell me what's going on in my life. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got time to read all this. Just tell me what's happening. And then what they say even though it may sound like wisdom, sometimes even sounds right. Oh, that's to draw you in. It's to draw you in. Stop believing all that stuff. It's even on Facebook, man. It's on all these social media sites. All that stuff where you have to, where they're trying to prophesy to you, man. You, you be careful when you allow other spirits and other things to prophesy and speak into your life. Amen. And then you begin to get an agreement with what they're saying, it's a spirit. And once you agree with this familiar spirit, then it, then it just lures you in to other things. You open yourself up to something that you don't know what you open yourself up to. Oh, pastor, it's not that serious, pastor. Just words. I'm just playing a game. It's not a game if you're a believer and you understand this invisible adversary that's out here. It's not a game. What's a game to you may destroy your child if you let it. You might can handle something that they can't handle, but you're exposed to it. Oh, yeah, baby, yeah, you can do this. And they get shipwrecked yeah, that's or destroyed. No, we don't play around or we don't tamper with this, this invisible enemy without knowing what we're doing. Amen? Amen? Praise God. So, so he prayed that God would smite him with blindness. That he would smite him with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of who? Wow. God said, y'all not ready for, because see, some of y'all, y'all would be like, kill him, Lord. <laughs> right now, as he's walking out the door, let him drop. Like, dang, you can't handle that kind of power. Like, no, we, our heart got to be right. We got to love people. <gasps> no, right now, fall, right now, fall, right now, fall. <laughs> Get him out of here. What would you say? Fall. No, I can't be God. 
I don't want that kind of responsibility. <laughs> no, 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 no. No. I don't want that kind of power. I know some people think they do. Oh, I don't want that kind of power. No, no, no. But God granted these brothers, <laughs> these brothers, oh my goodness, smiting with blindness. And the Bible says, and the Lord smote them with blindness according to the word of God. Listen, saints, sometimes we got to realize that God being for us is more than the whole world against us. Listen, the Lord's army was already there. Just, you, just because you don't see it doesn't mean your help is not already present. This servant didn't see his help, but it was already present. The pastor knew your help was there. The pastor's trying to tell you, based on the word of God, that your help is right there. But you don't see it, so you don't think it's there. So Elijah had to prove a point. Lord, open his eyes. Just because his eyes wasn't open, it didn't didn't mean that that the army of the Lord wasn't already a camp. They were already there. Your help is already there. What you need is already there. Your deliverance, your breakthrough, everything that you believe in God for, listen, is already there there it's already there it's already there it's already right there with you while you're wondering God is present while you're being concerned he's already taking care of it do you hear me while you're thinking about taking action the Lord is already taking action Lord open up my eyes sometimes we need to pray Lord open up my eyes that I may see Because the prophet, this young man couldn't see, and he needed the prophet to open his eyes. But we live in a time where we have the whole Bible. Lord, open my eyes that I can see what's going on. I think I know what I know, but I don't see everything. Lord, open my eyes that I may see what's really going on. While you're at your wit's end, he's right there. He is right there. He is right there. Jesus told Peter, he said, uh, the devil wants to sift you like wheat, man. He said, but I'm praying that your faith don't fail you. Praying that your faith fail you not. I, I, can't, I can't get them off of you, but if you listen to things I've shared with you, you can get them off from yourself. We used to tell people at the substance abuse ministry and, uh, you know, when people getting delivered from drugs and alcohol and you know, all, all type of uh, adverse situations, you know, we will, we will get the devil off of them while they were in our presence. But you don't live with me. You got to go home. When he come back, you got to know how to handle him when he come back. Look, in the form of a thought, because he's not walking through your door. If you walk through, oh, that's the devil. Nope, nope, nope. We're not letting you in. But he don't come through a door. He come through a wall, and he come through your mind and your thoughts and your eye gates. That's how he deceives us. He's a spirit of suggestion. That's it. That's all the power he has. Suggestion. So, so, so Jesus is telling Peter, he said, I pray your faith doesn't fail you. Look at Luke 10, 19, 10 17 real quick. 17 real quick. Oh, I got to move. I got to move. Almost done. I'm good. I'm good. I think I'm good. I think I'm good. All right. Luke 10, 17 says this. Send the 70. Then the 70 returned with joy saying, Lord, even demons are subject to us in your name. See, we expose the adversary, and I want to show you how powerful you are as a believer, how you can deal with this unseen adversary, how we handle this unseen adversary. He says, even the, the Lord, even demons are subject to us in your name. Verse 18 says, and he said to them, Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. You know, you know God didn't put his hands on Satan. No, Satan was an archangel. He was a high-ranking angel in heaven. Lucifer. His name was Lucifer when he was in heaven. He was a high-ranking angel. He was an archangel. He was the most beautiful angel that God had ever created. He was a walking instrument. He brought so much music to heaven. That's why the adversary attacks the music ministry so hard. He He attacks it hard. But he was the most beautiful angel, but he rebelled against God. I don't believe God just sat there and was like, man, because that was his son. He created him. Created being. He was his angel. He was, a, he, he was a created being. But that he thought that he could overpower God. So he caused a rebellion, and one-third of the angels followed him. No, they wish they had now, but 
God spoke a word. And Jesus was right there and said, wow, how God, you didn't even touch him. You could have got some, you could have, you, you could have did some stuff to him, but you didn't. You just spoke a word. Get out of here. Phew. He, he got, he, he got out of his presence so fast. It was like lightning. How God, how he, how his, God's word is so powerful that when he spoke that word, like get out of my presence or whatever God said to him, he shot out of heaven like lightning. Jesus is testifying right here. He's letting the disciples know that I know that demons are subject to you in my name. I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. But listen what else he says. Listen to this, saints. Behold, I give you, all of you, all of you that are saved, that name the name of the Lord, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Not some of his power, not a little bit of it, over all the power of the enemy. And listen, and nothing shall by any means, what? Hurt you. This is, these scriptures like this is what you need to read every day. To get in your spirit until you what? Believe it. We don't just believe it because you hear it one time. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. And like the video said, in a tired, tired time has passed, eternity, eternity has passed by. And hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. You have to hear this word because then I believe it. Once I believe it, I can walk in it. Once I believe that word, then I can see the results I'm looking for. We don't just believe it because you heard it one time, two times, or three times. It has to get in your heart out of your head. You might believe in your head, but until you believe in your heart, this scripture, that I give you the authority to trample over serpents and scorpions and over all the power, whatever it, power the enemy has, you believer have authority over it. Is it settled? See, remember in the, my confession in the beginning, whatever the Bible say, it's settled. Until it's settled, it's not settled. Until it's settled, it's not settled. It's not settled. And God needs you to settle some things. Because once you settle it, then you'll begin to see his power in your life. No, we can't be fickle with the Lord. He know where we are. He know how we think. He know oh, it's like this today, like this tomorrow. No. No. You have to settle it. You have to sell it because this walk we're in, it's a walk by faith. It's a walk by faith. It's a faith walk. This thing is a faith walk. So he's given us all the power over the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt us. Verse 20, verse 20 says this, nevertheless, do not rejoice in this. Don't just rejoice because you can cast devils and demons out and, and you got all this power, you got all this authority. This is what you want you to rejoice in, rejoice in because it was another scripture that said, Lord, I did all these things, but I still didn't know you. Therefore, he said, get out of here. I don't know you. That's the worst thing somebody can hear. When you, lie, when you die and leave here, is that I never knew you. I don't want to be doing all this work for the Lord, yet never know him. So that's why Jesus is making it plain right here. He said, listen, yes, I'm going to give you this power. I'm going to give you this authority. I'm going to give you all this stuff. But remember, I want to show you something that's greater than even all of that. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Rejoice because your name is in the book. Don't just rejoice because you can cast demons and devils out, open blind eyes, raise somebody from the dead. Oh, man, oh. Uh. Rejoice because your name is in the book. Well, doesn't that guarantee my name in the book? Not according to the Bible. According to the Bible, people are going to do that, but they don't know him. There were sorcerers and people in the Bible tried to purchase the Holy Spirit. People want power. They don't want accountability. They want power because they want to do what they want to do. I want no accountability. You ain't going to tell me what to do. Oh. Okay. Okay. How you flip that over, bro? You finish? Hold on. Slow down. Slow down, Flash. You know what I'm saying? I know you're getting a little, you know what I'm saying? But just slow down. We're going we to finish. 
Ephesians chapter 6 <laughs> is the last scripture right here. Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. This is what Dad read last night. This, you know, he jumped me on this scripture yesterday. I was like, Dad, I ain't going to really talk about it, talk about it, but I am going to go through it a little bit. I found a nice version that's going to make it real clear to you. Then I'm going to share four things, and then I'm done. Four closing points, and then I'm done. Not like point, 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 scriptures and all that. No, just points, and then we're done. Okay? We good? All right. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 says this. A final word. This is my final word. My final word. Be strong in the Lord and in, the, and in his mighty power. Be strong in who? And in his mighty power. Put on all, whose armor? God's armor. Listen, not yours. Not your armor, God's armor. It's only God's armor that's going to help you. Your armor does not work in the kingdom. You understand? It don't work. The way we did it in the world, we come into the kingdom, it don't work. So we have to take off that armor. It's like, again, we're my soldiers. We got soldiers. We're soldiers. Any former soldiers or soldiers in here today? I'm like, all right, praise God. Oh, hey, what's up, Dre? Hey, man, you with the Washington uh, football team. Praise God. <laughs> hey, man, God bless you. God bless you, you and your, you and your team. Hey, man. Hey, man. <laughs> got a Navy. You from the Navy. Look, so anyway, so when he got to the Navy, I remember his mom said, you know, they shipped my boy's stuff back. Yeah, he can't use his armor. His stuff need to go home. All your stuff, pack it up and send it back home to your mama now. Why? Because they got another armor for you. It's something else. You know, you don't need your armor in this kingdom. You don't need your armor when you're under the, this government. Everything you need, we got. So when in the kingdom, when you come into the kingdom, everything you need is in the kingdom. Send your old stuff back home. Send your old life back home. Send your old way of doing things back home. Send your old thoughts back home. Send that stuff back home. You can't bring it into the kingdom. It's no value in the kingdom. It will not help you in the kingdom. You had to send it home, man. It couldn't help you. That stuff you had couldn't help you in the kingdom. You got to send it home. It cannot remain with you. It will hinder you in your new assignment. Put on all of God's armor so that, listen, listen, God's armor, not your armor because your armor don't work. Your armor is not sufficient. God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm. Not just stand, but stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. The devil has some strategies. He's strategizing and plotting on how to take you down, how to take your family down, how to destroy your marriage, how to destroy your ministry, how to destroy your giftings, how to destroy your children, how to destroy your business and your job. He is strategizing on how to take you out because the Bible says in John 10 and 10, the devil comes to kill, steal, excuse me, and destroy. Kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus said, but I have come. Let me get this straight. Yeah, devil, you thought you was bad. But I have come that they may have life and live it more abundantly. So we're going to live the abundant life. If we're going to be followers of Christ. We have to take on God's armor so we can stand firm against all of his strategies, against all his plots and his plans and his schemes and everything he's doing to try to trip us up. But we can stand firm, stand firm. Like, I ain't moved by. I might, I might bend, but I ain't going to break. I might blow a little bit, but I ain't going back. I'm not getting off my post. I know what God told me. I know what I'm supposed to do. I'm not, I will not be moved. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Stand firm, saints. Against all the strategies of the devil. Stand firm in this time when the coronavirus is happening and all the rioting and all this other stuff is happening. You stand firm, believer. You stand like a soldier. Amen. Outside of the place over there, where they, at, over there in, uh, where they stand, don't move. They don't even flinch in France somewhere. Let me talk to some young people. Where is that? Thank y'all. Thank y'all. You know, we, we, we've been out of school a long time. But... What is it? Where is it again? England. They stand like this. Can you stand firm? Can you stand firm knowing where your help come from? 
Can you stand firm in your assignment, flat-footed and firm in your assignment, not fickle, not blown with every wind, tossed to and fro, carried about by every wind of doctrine, moving, cause, moving to the left because somebody else moved to the left, moving to the right because somebody else moved to the right. Can you stand firm in what you say you believe? Stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. Let me tell you, let me share with you what we are fighting against. We are not fighting, listen, we are not fighting against flesh and blood. It's not a flesh and blood fight. Man, if believers would get this, we could help the world. If the church would stay out of it, we could help the world. And I say stay out of it meaning lead the world and not follow the world. If we can teach them who the true enemy is, the believer. I'm talking about believers. How in the world that the church don't know who the real enemy is? How come the church tripped up today? All of a sudden, they running behind it too. Black power. No, Jesus power. Christ power. Remember, you don't have no rights. You're in the kingdom now. You don't like that? You're in the kingdom. You're in the kingdom of Christ now. You're in the kingdom of God now. You're not in the world. You're not of the world. We don't act like worldly folk. You want to be of the world? Then you act like the world. You want to be in the kingdom? You act like kingdom heirs. We're kingdom citizens. A kingdom citizen is higher than the color of your skin. What in the world? You're going to lower yourself. To the color of your skin? You're a citizen of heaven. Don't lower yourself. Because it's limited. When you do that, you limit yourself. And you limit your power. And the whole world is confused. Peter, <laughs> Paul said, I withstood Peter to his face. Because Peter was playing the hypocrite. First, you was with the Jews. and I mean, then, you know what I'm saying? You was called to the Gentiles. But when the Jews came in, you kind of backed away from the Gentiles. Acting like you weren't with them. Say, so you threw Barnabas off, off with your foolishness. How many of y'all are throwing people off with your foolishness? Throwing people off with your foolishness. Throwing people off with your hypocrisy, believer. You going to stand firm for the Lord or you going to stand firm for the color of your skin? You cannot do both. Either you're on the Lord's side or you're on whose side? The devil. Ain't no other sides to be on. Unless y'all tell me there's another side that I don't know about. Either you're with the Lord or you're not. All that stuff is a smoke screen. Don't get caught up in it. That's why the church is so divided, because they ain't looking at the Bible. They're looking at opportunities. It's an opportunity. I don't need the world for nothing. Jesus went to the world for nothing. Jesus, uh, who, who, do, who do we pay homage to? I mean, see, Jesus, give, go, give me a coin. Who, who face on there? Caesar. You rented a Caesar, what's here? You rented a God, what's here? Well, you know, I hadn't paid my tithes. He said, look, go to, go to the sea and get, a, get the first fish you, you get. A, yeah, take care of my taxes and yours. <laughs> this is the God that we serve. Don't lower your standard, believer. Believers must stand. We must stand unified. What are we unified around? The word. The word unifies us. That's it. It's the word that unifies us. And whatever the word say, that's what we're going to do. Amen. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. If we are the word, that's what we're going to do. Man, I, I, know, I, I know my time that went up now. I, okay. I, I'm going to finish this right here, then I'm, then I'm done. Dang. I mean, it's like a little piece. Of, yeah. Can I just share these four points with you? Thank you. Okay. I don't want to drop the mic and then walk off the stage. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> At least not right, not yet. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm just gonna read it to you. Okay, let me just do that. All right, okay. <sighs> it's 
calm down. Okay, praise God. All right. For, for we are now wrestling against. Listen, this is what I want you to do. I want you to see what you're wrestling against. This, this is how we got here. This is how we got here. We are not wrestling or we're not fighting against flesh and blood enemy, meaning people that you can see. This is a, this is a visible enemy series. That means I'm talking about an invisible enemy, not an enemy that you can see because we ain't, no, them, them enemies ain't nothing compared to the enemies we can't see. So we're, we're, fight, we're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against, listen to this, evil rulers and authorities of the what? Unseen world. Against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil. I mean, like that wasn't enough. I mean, I thought that was enough when you, when you just said evil rulers. Evil rulers? I, I, I just heard about these like in cartoons when I was growing up. Space goes to Tarzan the Barbarian. I'm dating myself now. But them the cartoons I grew up with. Wonder Twin Powers activate the Super Friends, the Legion of Doom, the good against evil. I'm thinking like, what? Now the Bible is telling me about, well, what? Evil rulers and authority. So this is, this is. This is a ranking system. Evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. I mean, I thought that was enough. No, that's not enough. Against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. That sounds like a whole lot of evil. That's a whole lot of evil, saints. Therefore, uh uh-oh, put on every piece of God's armor. How are we going to get the victory over this? We got to have on every piece of God's armor. So you will be able to what? Resist the enemy in the time of evil. There's an evil day that comes to all of us. And we got to be able to resist that evil day by having our armor on. Then after the battle, you'll be what? Still standing. What? Still standing firm again? Then it says 14, stand your ground. Putting on the belt of truth, speaking truth out of our mouth, not lying as believers, talking to believers. Amen. The belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. Well, the armor of God is filled with the righteousness of God. Verse 15, for shoes. Don't forget the shoes. Put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully Prepared. The Bible tells us in Romans, I'll be 12 and 18, somewhere around there, to live peaceably with all men. As much as depends on you, I believe it says. As much as it depends on you, live peaceably with all men. And 16 says, in addition to all of these, oh, ooh, ooh, we got some power. Wonder working power. In the blood of the Lamb. Okay. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith. We walk by faith, not by, not by sight. We don't walk by what we see, what we feel. We walk by faith, not by sight. Don't be moved by what you see. Don't be moved by what you see. I, I hear you, baby. I hear you. I got you. I got you. Don't be moved by the shit of, I mean, don't be moved by, don't, by, by what you see. Hold up the shit of faith to stop the fiery, fiery arrows of the devil. Verse 17, put on the salvation, put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. This is your offensive weapon, the word of God. Then it says, pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere, everywhere. Four things as I close real quick. Number one, this will go through it. Study your Bible, spend quality time with the Father, develop a listening ear, and walk in humility. Amen. I'm going to stop right there. Let me say it again. Let me say it one more time. Number one, study your Bible, spend quality time with the Father, develop a listening ear, and walk in humility. Humility 22, Proverbs 22 and 4 and James 4 and 10 was for humility scripture. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I'm going to stop right there.